Hey guys, we're looking at the Smith & Wesson 3953. I picked this up to let the girlfriend use it for carry because I think it is the perfect carry gun for a new shooter because there's no mistakes because you don't got to worry about a safety. You don't got to worry about a decocker because the long, heavy, double action only trigger should keep things safer if it's, you know, carried in a purse or put in a glove box or something that long, heavy trigger instead of a striker fired trigger. Also, this has a magazine disconnect, which should teach them safety that even the magazines out reiterate there could be one on the chamber. Don't trust it, but this can help stop accidents because of that. But this will be the safest, easiest, sim keep it simple, stupid for the person that only shoots a few times a year for their first year of carry. The Smith & Smith Wesson 3953. I'm going to take my first shots with it now and see where it hits. All right, guys. First shots with the Smith & Wesson 3953. Nice, thin, 8 plus 1. Look at my 3579 rule. Nine rounds should be enough. I like 13 and 9 millimeter. 945, 1140. But this is thin enough grip where a lot of pistols are really too thick for most female shooters, okay? So I'm going to see where they hit. Most of the third gens hit low. I'm going to use a combat hold, go for the headshots on the girl uh, zombie on the right, and we'll see how she shoots. Nice smooth double action trigger. Like a very good revolver trigger. Except lighter, lighter poundage. I wasn't even rolling the trigger until I dropped a couple of those last three. Looks like I dropped a couple though. I just pulled straight through. Let's see how I did. All right, so one one was off a little bit, but a nice jagged. They're all basically touching there. And those last three I just pulled through, that's bad trigger control on me and kind of learning how it rolls. It kind of was almost like a cool detective special. Um, I dropped those last three low, but all the first shots are in the tee box, so it looks like it is a combat hold that was at seven yards, and we'll keep seeing how she does. So two mags, have fun two mags 8 plus 1 with the OEM mag have been functioned flawlessly. The, the recoil spring and the OEM mag had still very good springs. You know, a lot of times if you find a used gun, maybe it's good to go. If not, change the springs out. Uh, mags are very hard to find and very expensive and only came with one OEM. So I got two pro mags and like I've done before, I don't trust the long-term durability maybe of their mag springs. So I change them out with wolf springs. So this is a pro mag with a wolf spring, a new wolf spring put in it. A plus one again, just to make sure that extra pressure that full reliability. I'll do a couple two shot drills just from low ready to her chest. Girlfriend already did very good. Five upper thoracic and three that went a little high, which is good, but all center line. So a nice smooth trigger, the DAO only works good. We come to this angle a little bit more, but keep her in frame. All right, two shot drills. Failure. Failure to load, it looks like. Magazine jam. Hopefully that will work out. Come in, come, come closer. All right, so this is why you gotta test your gear. These, of course, would be trading mags. OEM would be for carry. Uh, but I've had good success with other single stack pro mags when you replace with the Wilson spring. Hopefully this can get worked out. We'll try again. The mag A plus one, two shot drills. High compress ready or low ready, high compress ready now. Gun's a little thin for me. That's why it's probably a very good girlfriend gun or new shooter, smaller stature, someone that's not going to shoot often. Very smooth trigger. Well, last one went low a little bit. All right, let's see how I did. Keep the gun. Oh, very good. All in a box, except that one I called. 
When I went a little bit faster, I knew I'd get that one low. So the one I shot, I called low. But look at all those, all very good. It's a very smooth trigger. If you grew up uh, shooting revolvers, a DAO trigger could be the way to go. And it's probably the good way to stay safe for the newer shooter for their first year, their first gun, or someone that's only going to shoot two to four times a year or put it away. Safety, 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 trying to avoid. With the Pro Mag, put a little oil on the follower. It seems like it's getting pressure and pushing the follower on one side or the other, getting too much friction. Let's see. And it ran. Maybe that actually hit fixed it. <laughs> Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. I say that a lot that I look like Sean Astin over here. But, uh, you know, I actually worked one night on a movie set with a movie that never got released. I did a funny scene. I don't really see it, but maybe. Anyway, Sean Astin just got married to his bride, but unfortunately he was fooling around in the closet with uh, uh, the, the head wedding, the maid, maid of honor. And uh, then she bit his ass, so... Just like, just like zombies, sometimes you shoot them and they don't go down. Real people are that way. Sometimes you shoot them in the body, they don't go down. We're going to go to headshots. I might miss because, again, this pistol is a little too thin for me, which is why it's great for the brand new shooter or girlfriend gun or the smaller statured man uh, or whatever. So I do a retreat drill. Yeah, I did. All right, two A zone here. Remember, guys, I'm doing a retreat here while I'm scooting back at A zone and a crappy D or C zone, whatever you want to call it. And then uh, as I'm getting farther distance, we got one B, but good, like hard. That's good upper thoracic. And one there, that's still good upper thoracic below, like, the chest line or solar plexus line that's still going to hit some good goodies there headshot there perfect tee box headshot there about two inches low and headshot here that's good tee box there this was my bad shot i think i actually did short stroke before the fourth shot went bang this does have a false reset and it did kind of happen to me um i, I think i got hung up on the trigger a second it's gonna be really hard to tell but because of that false reset, it did kind of happen. So if you're used to shooting striker fire guns and riding reset, you may not like certain DAO pistols. I didn't realize that Smith & Wesson kind of had so much of a false reset like certain revolvers do. But for the new shooter, you're just going to teach them to kind of let the trigger out all the time. They're going to be shooting so slow. That's not going to happen to the new shooter. Again, it's safety and what is good for a new shooter. Okay. No, Sean, what, what's wrong with you, man? You're acting so weird. What the fuck? Why are you trying to bite me, dude? We've been friends forever. Stop it, Sean, acting. Stop it. Die, zombie bitches. Die, zombie bitches. And there you go, guys. So, what do I think of the Smith & Wesson double-action only pistols? I love the third gens. I think they were a great choice for law enforcement that was just switching over from a lifetime of revolvers. It's a very smooth trigger. It's like a D, uh, double action revolver trigger, but it's lighter. It's smoother. It's a very, very good trigger. Uh, and, and nowadays, I think it's still a very good choice for someone else, as I've said, for a brand new shooter, for someone that doesn't want to worry about buttons and decockers and safeties. And oh my God, I might glock myself because it's a striker fire trigger. It's a lot safer that the magazine drop safety um, and not thinking it's safe and relying on a safety and all that. So the third gen Smith and Wesson 3953 and the other double action only. I still think they very much have a place for the very occasional shooter, the grandma gun, the girlfriend gun, the, the non shooting all the time or for the first time to get them in carrying safely. And then they're going to be more accurate learning that double action trigger pull pulling through that, they're going to learn to be a more accurate shooter. And then eventually if they want to carry a light striker fired micro nine or a 45 or whatever, they could do that. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you have any experience with a third gen Smith and Wesson? I think you should pick one up. I really love them. They're very reliable with OEM magazines. I'm going to worry about dealing with the uh, 
pro mags later maybe putting the other springs back in i didn't have to do that before so not sure if their springs or the wilson uh, or the wolf springs is the better way to go like i've done before um but anyway um, girlfriend was also good upper thoracic all with it her third time shooting so i think it is a very good choice for her 25 ounces nine millimeter recoil is not bad now she's going to shoot some hollow points through it and some plus p and it should be able to handle that and she should be able to handle that fine but yet it's not too heavy to not carry to not put in the purse until eventually someone's comfortable with on body carry on body carry is a lot better than off body carry but some people you got to get them carrying and safe first and then they can get into it later and enjoy the second amendment and protecting their lives and the good people around them at all times thumbs up share subscribe please get in the comments fight the algorithm that hates all the 2a stuff thanks everybody